Our next uh, keynote speaker is Leo Castellanos. Uh, Leo is founder and director of Comparabien, uh, a very young and interesting company that he will for sure talk to you more about. Um, he knows a lot about startups. He was part of the founding team and manager of the London City Incubator, technology accelerator that focuses on the commercialization of digital media, healthcare, and clean technologies. He also founded uh, the Hangout uh, in London, an innovation hub uh, in Tech City, where innovators, academics, entrepreneurs, and students come together to commercialize, commercialize and launch digital media startups. Um, prior to that, he was a consultant, but I don't know if he's, he's going to share a lot about his experience in that field. <laughs> Please help me and welcome Leo Castellanos. Good afternoon. Hello. How's everyone? I hope you're all uh, enjoying the conference as much as me. Um, before I start, I'd like to just ask a few, a few questions. Uh, how many people here are actually uh, uh, Latin American? Wow, staggering. How many people are thinking about entrepreneurship and venture capital? Not as many. Great. Well, so, so the story I want to share with you is that of being both an entrepreneur and also trying to, to, to do so successfully, successfully in, in LATAM. So firstly, just a bit about me. Um, I was um, actually, I was just trying to, 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 to get a picture that would reflect the time set where we live, right? And, and fun, funnily enough, I found a selfie uh, with my uh, best friend. Just, he was actually looking at his mobile phone. Um, I was born and raised in Caracas. I'm, I'm Latin American by birth and, and raised. I qualified as an accountant and, and worked with uh, big four consulting firms for, uh, for about eight, nine years. Uh, at some point, halfway through my, my, my career, I decided I wanted to change, leave consulting, um, and into something that where, my, where I could leave somewhat of a bigger legacy. So I decided that the, the way to do it was to join innovation commercialization, bringing innovations to markets, entrepreneurship, and, and the venture capital world. So today I'm uh, a founder of Comparabien, um, and I'm also a venture capital investment director in a small venture capital fund here in, in London called Satch Invest. So the story about Comparabien, um, it's really funny because halfway through the MBA uh, that I was doing here in London, um, 2008, there was only two Latin Americans in my, in my cohort. And, and the other guy is, is my co-founder today. Uh, he's, he's here in the room today. And uh, it was 2008, and we were in one of these consultancy. It, it was actually an emerging economy trip uh, about leadership and management, um, management of change, change management. And, and we were in South Africa. And it was you know, a fascinating story. Uh, the, the, the story of Lehman Brothers collapsing just came out and we were out there in the middle of the jungle and, and it just felt like the world was coming to an end the way we knew it. So we came back and said, okay, well, Europe's going to be in, a, in an in interesting situation for the, for the next 10 or 15 years. And in contrast, LATAM was, you know, in 2008 was booming, you know, commodities at all high prices. Uh, Fueled with optimism, we decided that we wanted to, to, to get, to find a, a, a business model which we could replicate and take it to LATAM. So um, why would we do that? I mean, it's, being an entrepreneur is, is not easy. Uh, we could have both stayed at our, our current jobs. He was working as a global manager for Unilever. I was working with, with Anson Young. Especially when you start reading about the stats, you know, of what it takes to, to, to bring a new venture to market. It takes about 58 new product uh, ideas to get one successful product. We all know that most startups will fail. Three out of four will not generate the return on investment they promised investors when, when they started. And um, of those that succeed, at, at least two thirds will pivot or changing the, in their business model. Nevertheless, 
we thought it was uh, a fantastic opportunity and decided to take the model of what you guys in the UK know as a money supermarket to Latin America. So for those of you who don't know the model, I'm just going to tell you very quickly what it is. This is Marcella. Marcella is a young 27-year-old couple of kids. She, her, her, daily, her day goes about um, just driving her daughters to school, working eight hours, meeting with friends after work. Her frustrations are lack of time to do anything, uh, trying to save money to, to go on holidays, and uh, stress of having to, to, to go through uh, all the options in the market and lack of understanding, for example, about the products that, that they can get. Our solution to her is a service that is easy to use, completely, completely independent, and, and will give her instant results when looking for, for example, car insurance. On the other side, we've got Ricardo, who is a, let's just say he's a, a marketing manager at uh, a big bank. Ricardo's day is about uh, defining marketing channel strategy, analyzing research and consumer behavior, manage online promotions. And uh, his frustrations and, and things that he has to do is uh, find innovative uh, ways to, uh, to bring new campaigns. He knows that traditional marketing activities are really, really hard to, to measure. And customer acquisition costs are really, really high. So our solution, again, to him is acquire, increment the size of uh, the channel of customers they're bringing. 100% measurable, and it's, it's highly cost effective. So we bring together in a marketplace customers and providers. The, the services for, for the people, for their users is a simplified search, saving time and money, all independent results, whilst for big providers is increasing volume enabling target marketing spend and being cost effective. And we do that in three, in three verticals, banking, insurance, and telecoms. The business model, just very, very quickly, is we create loads and loads of marketing, loads of word of mouth and people talking about the site. Uh, then they will come to the site and uh, visit, compare all the products in the market that will generate some leads, which will hopefully become revenues. So, our inspiration was, as I, as I mentioned before, the UK. The UK market is just absolutely staggering. And, and it's a market that it did not exist in 2004. The, the, the financial aggregator market did not exist in 2004. Today, it's a market that it's estimated to be worth five billion pounds. The largest competitor in that market, money supermarket, um, has a market capitalization of about one billion pounds. And well, there, there were other uh, interesting factors that we took into account, like internet penetration, for example. So that gives you an idea of you know, the, the, the sheer side of the, size of the opportunity and why we decided to go. Our, our current foothold in, in LATAM, um, it's six countries. We are in... Well, we started in Peru, then launched to, in Colombia, Brazil, Chile, followed on to Mexico, um, and we are now in beta in Argentina. Uh, uh, Mr. President, we'd like to grow um, uh, a lot more and be in, in Uruguay in the, in the near future, so we'll, we'll see. Our numbers today, we've done about three and a half million comparisons. Two and a half thousand monthly leads generated. We have screened over six and a half million uh, dollars of uh, monthly mortgages applications. Sorry, one million in, in personal loans. Screening half a million on car loans, and 1.5 million in in savings and deposits. Obviously, we are still a startup. We're young, but we are hungry. Our uh, traffic is growing organically and it's, uh, it's showing an annual growth of about 127%. Most of our traffic is, is organic, so people just come because they want to. 63% um, of visitors 
come and, uh, and do a comparison, and they, they, they visit about around three pages. So, so why did we decide back then, you know, LATAM? And apart from the, the you know, the, the obvious talent, um, back then, and I'm not going to talk about all the FDI figures, but you know, a staggering figure was 5,700 was the average uh, income per capita in the region. Um, when in comparison to, to China, that's about two and a half times, or was two and a half times, and four and a half times for India. Uh, back then, also, VCs were looking at uh, LATAM. More and more, it was cited by 55% of uh, VCs as an area of increasing US investment interest in 2013, followed by China, 40%, and India, 37%. So the market in LATAM, our market in Latin America, uh, and it's not just about football, it's, uh, or, uh, or tango, or samba, or great food. The internet penetration numbers were absolutely staggering. The internet penetration ab about tripled in the last 10 years. E-commerce uh, in the region grew for about 700% in, 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 the, in the six years to 2013. The, the size of the middle class, which is uh, a, 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 a very important factor in our business, went from about 200 million people to 300 million people in only 10 years. Brazil alone, as you all know, uh, brought about 40 million people in, into the middle classes. So that's 40 million of people like Marcela, who are now buying the first home uh, getting their first car and having to insure it and access to credit. So uh, great figures for, uh, for a market like ours. There's, there's obviously other really important um, factors like GDP, but internet, uh, internet users, mobile phones, pretty, pretty important one, the mobile penetration in, in, in the region. Facebook users, e-commerce, with some, some room to grow, and also digital advertising with plenty of room to grow. Again, internet penetration, when compared with, with the rest of the, the, the regions, even though it's roughly on average by, by 50%, 50 and, and obviously there are stark differences between, the, between countries, uh, there's plenty of, of room for growth. So our bet, uh, the bet we made was, was the rise of the aggregator. So will this model that works, obviously works in the UK, replicate successfully in, in LATAM? And so we knew the factors that uh, were really important to make that uh, a success. The tipping point would be an increased presence of competitors, increased uh, investment in the, in the market, development, and then the industry would take off. In our view, it was, was about to happen in 15 to 18 months' time. Our bets already started paying off, especially when we started, started paying off with people. People like uh, our, our users, our daily users. When we launched, we bootstrapped the entire proposition. So. Um, just gather a few thousand dollars and then decided to validate the hypothesis. What is the hypothesis? The hypothesis is, will this model that works successfully in the UK work in, in a Latin American country? And you know, in the end, it's just a guess. And to validate that guess or that hypothesis, we released what, what we in the startup world know as an MVP, a minimum viable product. So released a website and then he immediately started getting raving reviews from people, loving the site, loving how easy it was to use, and obviously bringing a lot of clarity and transparency to a somewhat closed market. So um, that validated the model, and we decided to, to, to go further and, and decided to launch Colombia. And, and with Colombia, the, the hypothesis was, well, it worked in Peru. Peru is a smaller nation. Uh, it's obviously growing at tremendous rates. 
but will it work in a, in a nation five times the size? And the, the great thing was that it did. So people, again, love the concept, love, love the fact that they could just save a lot, so much time. Instead of visiting banks in and out, someone uh, at lunch was saying, uh, in Latin, people sometimes prefer to, to go to the dentist than to go to the bank. It's more painful. They actually take more pain to, to going to the bank. Um, so it was a tremendous success from, from, a, from a point of view of the user. Again, on the, the media, it's also played a really important uh, part. We have appeared about 127 times in you know, different media channels, just complete free PR for us. The media loved our story, loved the fact that we were bringing transparency to the market, forcing, uh, in, in their view, forcing a, a tougher competition between the players that, uh, that were already present. So uh, uh, great mentions in, in media outlets like CNN, both in Mexico and in Chile. Um, and well, you know, it's TV, radio, press, internet, so great, great story there. Now, it's obviously not as easy as it sounds, right? And so the, the, we had a, a, the, the biggest challenge we've had was that of onboarding providers. When I, when I mean onboarding providers, I mean bringing those suppliers to the market and ensuring that we would be able to monetize on the, on the, through that business model that we were thinking about. So their, their question was, what, why would I let you guys in to the supply chain? I don't need you. And in fact, we had a, an interesting meeting with the largest bank in Peru two years ago. And they gave us, you know, they were kind enough to give us a, an hour of their time. But towards the, the last 20 minutes, they basically said, this will never work. It will never work in Peru. It will never work anywhere else. And these are the reasons why. And they gave us about 10 or 15 reasons why it would not work. And uh, they didn't laugh in our faces, but uh, I, I felt like they were. So um, it's, it's, it's amazing to be able to tell you that six months ago, they came back knocking on our door saying, by the way, can we do some online media with you guys? Uh, we've got about 30 users signed up, sorry, 30 providers signed up today. Most of them in Peru, where we start at first, but um, increasingly in, in other countries like Colombia and Mexico. Some of the, some of the quotes from, from really large banks are, uh, Interbank, our, our annual digital media strategy for the year, will include only three external partners, Google, Facebook, and Comparabien. Uh, Scotia Bank says, we are set to become our biggest online mortgage inter intermediary this year. So. Um, We've also had a lot of uh, support uh, and prizes. We've, we've won a, a few prizes, but our friends from, from Startup Chile, we, um, we were shortlisted and were part of the, the Startup Chile program. We used that program to help us launch the, the Chilean venture and also develop our, our technological platform. Um, last year, we were in the, in the top 10 startups in Colombia. And uh, again, gained uh, a huge amount of, of press through that. Uh, we also uh, have raised uh, a couple of rounds of capital, venture capital, in 2013. We raised just over half a million dollars to help us get where we are. Uh, I was told yesterday by, uh, I was emailed yesterday by, by Daniel, who just came in, um, a friend from uh, CrowdBank. Um, Daniel, by the way, is uh, an alum from, from LBS. Um, that uh, last night we were, we went into oversubscription with uh, with the campaign that we're doing with them. So that's that's great news for us. Um, but uh, so it, not everything is rosy. So there's challenges ahead, and you know challenges today. I've I've got about top three, and then I'll, I'll give you a, a list of the the rest without trying to trying not to repeat uh, what, what the the previous speak, um, speakers have covered. But uh, I think the first one is when you are doing business, uh, you, know, you, know, you are an entrepreneur and trying to do business in different Latin American countries, it's always realizing that 
uh, even though we share, we share the same language and share the same cultural, cultural background, it is that 80-20 consulting rule uh, that matters. It's recognizing that even though we are pretty similar, we're not the same. And so um, uh, that is not only present in terms of regulatory and, and economic, uh, macroeconomic indicators and ease of doing business. Uh, give you an, an example, it took us about nine months to open a, a company in Brazil. It took us three days to open a company in Colombia. Now, it's taken us 13 months to, to close a, uh, a deal in Colombia, even though uh, you know, um, it, it, was a, it had to go ahead from, from the very beginning. So, but you know, it's recognizing that we are not the same. We, we are slightly different. And it, it is those small differences that matter when doing businesses. Um, I think uh, Alfredo was telling me in, in Peru to take someone for drinks to do business would kind of be frowned upon. And in Mexico, I, I, I hear that's just the way you close businesses. You know? um, so um, do you agree, Carlos? Yeah, that's OK. Uh, um, second one. It's, it's a race, we're in a race. Um, sometimes, obviously, with my UK mentality, uh, I become quite frustrated when, when doing business in, in Latin because the, the pace can be quite slow sometimes. You know, um, just telling you that, that example of 13 months to close a deal. Uh, and it was just about signing all the paperwork, getting it uh, revised, reviewed, lawyers, then, you know, the another committee and another so many people having to look at a document. Uh, and it's, it's, it's dire for an entrepreneur. Then the next one, a pretty, pretty important one, is that of talent. Talent is really scarce, especially when, when it comes to specialist knowledge. Uh, in the area that we work in, digital marketing, you've got two choices. You either hire someone and you spend a lot of money, uh, which for a startup is it, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge, or you take time and train them. Uh, but in either way, you are making a bet and you have to try to find that balance. Mm. And I know that talent scars everywhere in, 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 in digital, but in LATAM, and when, when business is growing at the speed at, at which digital businesses are growing, you feel the pain even more. Other challenges are uh, obviously ac access to decision makers, access to capital. We, we've talked about that in, in venture capital is even bigger. Um, there's, there's a lot of people with money, but there's not a, there's not a lot of people that uh, understand technology. So uh, uh, it, it's a true challenge. So, and, and that explains why we have raised money in, in the UK rather than, than in LATAM, although we do have one or two visionaries that have invested in, in us. Uh, another pretty big one is uh, the, the synergies within, with universities and state. And it's not, I, I, this is something that comes from, from one of my colleagues, um, Alejandro Peña. He's a, a, a doctor in politics. But, and his dad is an entrepreneur, a, a, a software entrepreneur in Argentina. And uh, one of the things that they, they kept mentioning is you know, those synergies that we find that you see in the UK and in, 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 in Asia and the US uh, of research. And, uh, and taking that research, commercializing it, and making sure that it's relevant to the region, rather than just doing what we are doing, which is copying something that works in, in the hope that we um, tropicalize it and, and it works. Uh, macro, I'm, I'm not going to cover that. It's pretty important. I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. Uh, regulatory as well. Uh, hiring people is, you know, it's just an example. Hiring someone in, in, in Brazil, when I talk to my Brazilian partners and, and we go through, okay, who are we going to hire? Once we've found the, 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 the right person, then it's like, oh my God, this is a huge bet. Because once they're in, they're not out. I mean, it, it can cost you a lot of money to, to, um, to get rid of someone who's just not doing the right job. And pretty huge companies can afford to, but a small startup trying to just get by, it cannot afford that. So, well, there are still plenty, plenty of opportunities. And I think our top three opportunities 
I'm going to introduce you as a trivia, just to make it a little bit more fun. This is obviously about youth. Um, and I'm going to give you those two figures. And I would hope that someone will just be brave enough and say what those figures are about. Anyone? Age. Go on. Age. Yes, so one is age, which is... Yes, okay, and, and the other one is... Excellent, so online users in LATAM are 60% of our online users in LATAM are under the age of 35, which means that the future is not, not only young, the present is young. It's a, it represents a huge opportunity to target products to, to this demographic, especially online. The second one, pretty illustrating picture there. I'm gonna give you three figures. This is a bit more, this is a bit harder, but anyone? Ten years, in the last ten years, e-commerce went from $5 billion in the region to $57 billion. That's 11 times the size of, of, of e-commerce. And there is still huge, huge amount of growth to be had. Uh, if you go back to, to, to the, the table where I was showing US, China, and, and LATAM, uh, we've got the, the per capita income, we've got the internet penetration, there is a huge gap in the e-commerce, uh, which we hope and we, we believe that it's going to, to be met in the next two years. And finally, Again, it's three more, four, 19, and 86. Anyone? Say that again. All right, can't hear you. <laughs> uh, four years. In the last four years, the sales of smartphones went in Latin America from 19% to 86% just in the last four years. The speed of technology adoption is phenomenal. And um, in, actually, last year in 2014, Latin America led the entire world, the entire world in speed of smartphone adoption. Phenomenal. A great opportunity to be had uh, around mobile. It's not a smart world, it's a smartphone world. So, just bringing the, the, the chat to an end, and then we're gonna have time for some, some Q&A. Um, LATAM is still the fastest growing region for internet penetration and e-commerce expansion. The population is amongst the largest in the world. It is a Spanish-speaking uh, continent, with the exception, obviously, of, of our uh, neighbors in Brazil, which brings many advantages when compared to Europe, Asia, Africa, or even India. Still it still has uh, quite, a, quite a, a big number of challenges to, to, to face with. We, we trust that the opportunities will outweigh the challenges. A further thought. I, I think probably, you know, it's just coming from me, I was thinking about, you know, what is the main challenge for, for Latin America? And there's so many, but in the end, it's, it's also, it also comes down to mentality, it comes to, to attitude. Uh, especially, you know, in, in, in politics, uh, the last few years, we've, we've had a lot of scapegoating and finding uh, people who are uh, to blame for what happens to, to, to the region. And, you know, well, I'm not going to, to debate about that. But in the end, the biggest challenge is just to say, we are the masters of our destiny. We can, we can get it done. 
We just need to keep moving. Uh, life is a journey, uh, Pope Francis says. Uh, when we stop, things don't go right. I'm, I'm going to give you with a further thought for those who are thinking about entrepreneurship in the region. Great spirits have always encountered opposition from mediocre minds. That is Albert Einstein. Thank you very much. Hello. There. Leo, thank you so much for the talk. Um, you mentioned something in your presentation about how talent is very scarce. And I think that that is actually exacerbated in Latin America because a lot of the most talented young people in the country actually feel compelled to leave the region to find economic opportunities. So how do you see entrepreneurship as fostering opportunities and encouraging people to actually want to return to their region and continue their careers there? So, um, well, I, I think uh, without wanting to, to enter into politics, I think that is a, a big part of it, right? Uh, so I am from Venezuela. My wife is Argentinian. And some people say, well, are you ever going to go back? And obviously we are, you know, uh, and we do go back all the time. But, but um, as an entrepreneur, it's pretty challenging to, to try and go to Venezuela, for example. Uh, and it's just, regardless of what you believe in, you know, whether you are on the left or the right or the center and you believe in, you know, we need to address certain things, it comes down to, will this work here? You know, will I just waste my time and money and, and, and is, it, is it worth the risk? Um, we were actually, uh, we started uh, creating the website to, um, to start comparing some financial products in, in Venezuela. And then I get a call from, from Alfredo saying, uh, there's no point. What do you mean? Well, there's nothing to compare. They're all the rates are the same. And, uh, and it was just uh, that all the banks were putting the, you know, they're publishing their rates at the highest they could according to the central bank. So uh, there's no opportunity for us there. Um, so I think that just tells you an example of how entrepreneurs from the region will always be looking for change and we'll always try to, to build upon it and exploit it. But the opportunities, the, you know, the change needs to be there and, 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 and the gap needs to be there. Um, our countries also need to, to, to make us feel safe and make us have the quality of life that some people you know, um, would expect uh, to have, like security. You know, it's a big, big thing. Um, I think... Uh, Solving the, 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 the talent gap will, will be a byproduct of investment in education. In, and uh, again, the market will dictate how much uh, companies like, like ours and, and, and bigger companies can afford to pay to, to, to bring that talent back. But people always want to go back. I met, I met a, a guy in venture capital two, two weeks ago. He's, he's Argentinian and he's going back. He's not going back to Argentina, he's going to Chile, but you know, it's pretty close. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and he was saying uh, he wanted to launch his, his firm in, in Argentina, and then you know, uh, certain things happened in the country that the board of directors said, hang on a minute, this Latin American idea of yours, um, why don't you just go to Chile, please? Um, so people want to go back because you know, when you, when you live in a different country and you don't have your family around, it's, it's also pretty tough. So I do believe that people will if the, if the right conditions are there. Okay. Thank you for your speech. I think it's really interesting to see these kind of companies in the region. Uh, I would like to disagree on the shortage of talent of the region in technology or digital. Being from Colombia, having a study computer science and also working here in the technology industry, I believe the challenge that you may have is that in the technology and media industries or digital industries, you have a shortage of talent everywhere, not only in Latin America. Um, I would like to know if you, you also mentioned that um, you guys have also venture capital that is investing in other ideas. 
So I was curious to know if you are investing in other uh, technology or digital ideas in the region, apart from Comparabien, or where are those investments being made, and what kind of companies are you guys investing? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let me just start by saying that I absolutely agree with your comment. Um, and forgive me if it didn't come out that, that, that way, but I, I, I said talent scars in digital everywhere. Uh, I, I think my point was that the growth that the region is experiencing, um, it's phenomenal, and uh, it doesn't produce as many as other regions produce with lower demand of, of that type of specialist talent. Um, in terms of investments, uh, so putting my Sachi Invest hat on, we, we tend to invest in, in things around London uh, and the UK, but have gone beyond. And um, uh, we believe in big ideas in the world. Um, so we've done an investment in, in a company in, in the Internet of Things. It's a, it's a global company. We've done an investment in a, in a US company, an e-commerce e site uh, run out of New York. I believe that we will just invest in, in a big idea if the opportunity is right. So we are open to, to different things. Obviously, Sachi Invest, being a, a, a backer of, of Comparavien, is putting kind of all those eggs, the Latam eggs, in, in one basket. So we hope to bring some, some positive results and, uh, and, and show that the region has some, a lot to show for. Thank you. Um, you said uh, it was difficult to raise money for Comparabien, raise money from Latin venture capitals, and that you ended up raising from UK. Is that right? Did, did I yes, that's, right? A, that's right. And I don't think that is. Sorry, did you finish your question? So, my question, if, if, that, if I understood correctly, my question is why was it difficult to raise money from uh, Latin venture capital? and in the future, as Comparabien hopefully grows, uh, would you look into raising money from the Latin region or st stick to the to, to UK or Europe? Or, yeah, or no, absolutely. Place? Absolutely. And, you know, it's, we, the, the reason why it's hard, I don't think it comes down to the proposition of Comparabien. I think it comes down to the mentality of the investors. So there's, there's, Latin is not full of uh, VCs who used to be entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. So the, the, the technology investment world is quite new to the region. So the very limited LPs in, you know, it's about three or five, you know, that are investing in this sector particularly. And, uh, and they are at VC level. And we, when you're trying to launch a startup, you are at seed level. So um, it's that gap. And I think a lot, a lot can be done and it's being done by, by, by governments who help invest some funds into, you know, uh, fostering that environment. Uh, so programs like the, the ones in, in, in Chile, like Startup Chile, like um, I, I'm sure I, I, I understand there are a couple in Brazil. Um, there's uh, one coming out in Peru. Um, there, there is a, quite a big gap there. So you either just keep knocking on doors uh, or just go somewhere else and, and sell the vision. You know, these model didn't exist, then it worked. We think it can work. What do you guys think? Let's give it a go. Last one. Anyone? Great. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks. Thank you.